Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, what is good, guys? Good morning, guys, how are we today? Yes, flavour in the chart. Wicked, wicked, wicked. What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? I am coming on a little bit sooner than expected, guys, but... We've got some movement in the charts. We've had some movement in the charts and we've got a lot to talk about. Firstly, before we dive into what we're looking at in relation to Bitcoin, we have got some unrest happening in China. Now, why are we talking about China? Not because it's the only thing that is sparking the interest of the news, but we're talking about it because the markets are going to react to this. Now, some of you may be already trading this situation. You can see what happened last night with Bitcoin, where Bitcoin decides to take a rollover. And I'm going to be talking about a projection that I did for the patrons of the channel, helping them understand the breakdown and the clues that are left behind. Not to say that we know it was going to drop, but we were looking at things from a point of view where we needed to understand the way price moves to lead us to the probability of price going in a specific direction. We'll get to that in a very short while. But the markets today, we are going to see some reactions, okay? When there is a rare protest in China, we all know the situation in China. It's Things are controlled out there, okay? Now, to see the public going absolutely crazy, I mean, bro, like this, it's unbelievable witnessing what we're seeing right now. And this is getting a bit of a concern for the markets because all of a sudden now China's Chinese stocks have taken a nosedive. Oil has taken a slump down to the $80 mark and we'll be looking at oil very shortly. We're going to be looking at oil stocks as well. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a mad week of news. This week, in my opinion, should only be for guys who are scalping the markets. In other words, try and limit your exposure to the markets this week. When I say that, what I'm saying is don't leave positions open for too long. If you've made profit, take it, reset, start again. Look for the next trading opportunity, okay? We've got Lagarde speaking today at 2 p.m., which is in the next 5, 10 minutes. Now, the Eurozone itself is in a recession. So what can Lagarde say? What are they going to tell us about their approach to resolving this problem that we've got in the Eurozone? Now, not to get it twisted, the UK itself, of course, it's not in the Eurozone anymore, but there is talks of them trying to come back. Rishi Shunak is getting a lot of opposition by people inside of his party with his policies. We've got the idea of Russia about to release half a million troops, whether it's speculation or not, the market is going to react to that. We've also got the US giving the Ukraine a potential long-range missile. I mean, come on, bro, what's going on? There's a lot of tensions and the challenges that we're experiencing are only going to be reflected in traders' sentiment. And that's when we look to the charts to try and establish whether or not the market's going to take that information in, okay? Now, more importantly, we've got Jerome Powell speaking this Wednesday. We have got bags of data coming out. Now, the general consensus says this. Last week, the idea of 5.03% as a peak for the interest rates in the US was something that interest rate traders were throwing out there, okay? Now we're starting to see the idea of potentially coming in at 5.25%. This is all going to be based on the news data that is released this week. We've got the unemployment rate coming out. We've got the ADP non-farm employment change as well. We've got NFP, which is non-farm payrolls, which always comes out on the first Friday of a new month. We have a new monthly candle coming into play, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? We've also got consumer confidence coming out tomorrow. There is a lot of data that's going to come out and suggest to us whether the Fed is going to be correct with its approach in slowing down the interest rate hikes. Now, listen, they're playing word games here. There's a game of chess happening right now. Now, I know my guys who are involved in the idea of conspiracies, whether the government's out to get you and what have you. Okay, cool. I need to follow where the money's going because the money's really going to show me where exactly everyone's intention is. Okay? Now, check it like this. 
you've got the interest rates in the US at precedented highs. But one thing that has got my attention is the fact that the Eurozone is in recession, UK is in a recession, the whole world is going upside down, but the US has a different definition for recession. Statistically, the yield curve. Now, the yield curve itself gives us the idea of where investors' heads are, are at. So if investors favor long-term investments, that means they're happy to lock up their liquidity for a longer period of time to generate a return, then happy days. Things look positive in the longer term. But the problem that we've got now is traders are favoring shorter term returns. So they're not locking up their liquidity for longer periods. They are keeping it they, they, they're keeping it trapped up in certain assets for a short period of time and withdrawing that liquidity. The yield curve itself, ladies and gentlemen, has inverted to its lowest point in 22 years. Yet the US is refusing to accept that the US is in a recession. Now, analysts across the board, Goldman Sachs, um, JP Morgan and all the heavyweights out there are calling for the idea that growth going into and up towards the, tw um, the 2023 earnings announcements, okay, maybe the third quarter, is looking to slump about 39%. Bruv, like, come on. We've already got this problem with Apple, and Apple may actually have a little bit of an aggressive open today, which could lead Apple stocks or shares trading lower for the session. Now, whenever you have tech stocks like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Whenever they open stronger lower, it usually dictates the narrative for the rest of the stock market going into the trading day. You saw what happened in Sydney last night. Asia takes a tumble to the downside. Bitcoin narrowly misses that 16K, ladies and gentlemen, close to that 50% of the way towards the 8K zone. Now, yes, the title of this video is, has the collapse started? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the US is in denial. They are relying solely on the data that comes out this week, okay? If the inflation data comes out tame, then that's happy days. They are justified in their slowing down of the rate hikes. If the unemployment rate comes in higher, then they are justified in their approach because the problem that they have is there are too many jobs, sorry, too many people are looking for jobs and the supply of jobs isn't present. Why? because people are staying in their jobs and high hourly earning paid jobs themselves are becoming less and less accessible, all right? So the Fed needs to try and gauge the idea of if consumer sentiment is positive and still strong, the Fed's gonna have a problem, all right? If the inflation data comes in and shows that it's slowing down but ever so slightly, then they will be justified in their approach to reduce the interest rates. But analysts across the board are saying otherwise. You see, the Fed is a business, okay? An analyst's business is to understand human nature and put the econo economic theories together to try and come to an assumption about where we are heading in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, human nature doesn't change. Go all the way back to the 70s, okay? We had a war there, we had inflation, the federal funds rate was about 15, nearly 15%. We were going through madness. And every important point that happens in the marketplace or anything that happens economically to any world, sorry, any country in the world, okay, there is a ripple effect. You can't tell me that the Eurozone is in a recession, UK in a recession, all right? The same countries that rely on the US, okay? And then you've got a protest happening in China, which is causing a big unrest due to the zero COVID policy. I mean, bro, what is the US thinking right now? This is what's got my attention. Yes, we've had some movement in the charts, ladies and gentlemen. We've had a little bit of a movement to the upside. Does that mean it's all now time to go all in? Look, the yield itself tells you that people are not committing liquidity for the longer term. We've got earnings announcements coming out soon, okay, for the, third, for the final quarter. We know Apple's going to have a bit of a problem given what's going on in their factories in China. We know full well that there's going to be an issue with supply. So Apple's outlook kind of looks bleak. That's going to have an impact on the Nasdaq. That's going to have an impact on the dominant, dom, dominance of the dollar. You can see traders right now are rushing to the Japanese yen because the yen is deemed as a traditional safe haven. Okay? 
Now, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to go over to the charts to break down what is actually happening and what we can expect going into the New York session. Because Asia has reacted to this protest. The UK in principle has reacted to this protest, but not really moved down that much. It's the New York session that's going to bring the flavor. I'm going to say this to you now. If you are running shorts and you've been in a short of Bitcoin for a long time, this may not apply to you. But to the person that's coming to the chart and wants to look for some movement, make sure that you keep your leverage low and you do not commit too much liquidity. Why? Because the nature of the markets right now is very volatile. Yes, we want volatility, but we want to have it when the overall outlook is either positive or genuinely negative. We are at a mixed situation. Is the Fed going to increase the interest rates? Are they going to slow it down? Will the data suggest otherwise? Is inflation going to go up or is it going to come back down again? Are we going to see a slowdown in things? What's the story? There is no definitive groundwork to where we can see things happening in the future other than it doesn't look good. How bad is going to only show itself in time? So, ladies and gentlemen, mad love and respect. Let's get to the charts. I hope you're all doing well today, guys. Mad love to you. Let's check it out and see what we've got. So, here we go. All right, let me get my little camera, please. Oh, happy days. All right, then. So, in front of you, what do you have? You have Bitcoin. Bitcoin took a little bit of a tumble last night, ladies and gentlemen. This is the five-minute time frame. Okay, you can see how much of a move Bitcoin actually took. But let's understand the actual play of Bitcoin. Here was a projection that I shared to the patrons of the channel on Saturday talking about understanding the narrative. Now, I did the same thing last Saturday and we had the movement to the downside, but I was explaining to them this is the 10 hour time frame with Bitcoin. And you can see that we are seeing certain behaviors in the chart, which are suggesting that they are just quickly trying to grab the liquidity, come back down and not really giving me that commitment. Notice the green, sorry, the gray candlesticks are engulfing around any attempt up to try and move price higher. OK, as we progress forward, you see this is the five hour time frame. We kind of get a closer look. Here's this big gray candlestick right here, this gray candlestick. And then we see another collection of gray candlesticks suggesting to me that the idea is that they are wanting to just grab the liquidity from the upside to bring it back down again because they know they can grab interest inside of this zone. OK, we go over and we can see this is a no vector zone principle where you see price comes back down, but not covering any vectors on the five hour time frame. But you go in deeper, you'll see that there are vectors in that zone. We go further and we talk about this Bitcoin on the one hour time frame with the VWAP. And we're talking about the VWAP breach zone right here and talking about the journey of where we would expect Bitcoin to end up. We had vector candle principles inside of this zone right here. And the VWAP breach zone was to suggest to us that if they break beyond this zone, then it would tell us that the narrative is to continue to go lower. OK, and here we had 17,000 at the 17,000 mark. There were no liquidation points for Bitcoin. There was no liquidation points. It was zero. OK. And then when you go to the liquidation point for Bitcoin, you see at the 17K zone, we now have, it was last night, there was $1.289 billion worth of liquidations at the 17K zone. Now those have been removed. So traders are starting to pay themselves. All right. They're taking money off the table. And if we go and look at Bitcoin's behavior, go to the 15 minute time frame, you can see how they've come back. They've hit that breach zone of that VWAP, took the liquidity to the downside and narrowly missed the projection of 16K by $50. All right. So this is what we were projecting over the weekend. But all you needed to understand, guys, was the following. This is something for you to take if you use the hybrid system. OK, just look at the behavior of Bitcoin. They are giving us an example of their favor to grab price from the highest point. OK, look at how the vector candles are not completing to the stronger part of the candlestick. Just look at this zone. Look at that. That is just a clear as day stop run. They just want to grab the interest up there because retail is gullible. That's the sad truth. It is gullible. It thinks, oh, wow, look, Bitcoin's pumping up and then it brings it back down again. Because at that point in time, the sad truth is someone went long inside of that zone. 
So the best way for the market to trap liquidity is to make it think it's going somewhere. Because at the time of it moving in that direction, the person who kicks in with his fear of missing out is really going to get involved in this. And he's going to start putting commitment and putting his liquidation points all the way down here because he's using 100x leverage and he's going to end up paying the price. And in the same 15 minute candle, Bitcoin rips down lower. OK, we see the same thing happen again right here. Yet the psychological zone itself prevents price from going higher, suggesting Mr. Market Maker was getting ready to roll price over and using the protest as a means for that. OK, you can't say to me that they were going to move higher. We could have made the assumption they were getting ready to move higher by the principle of this vector candle right here and this wick. Because when you're projecting price, you have to factor in where price is likely to go from one point to the next before it goes in the continued direction, which is lower. Remember, bear market rallies, they don't last long. The yield is inverted, so short-term interest is favored. And if the money players are putting money into the chart, it's only for a short period of time. OK, now you see Bitcoin completely rejects the psychological ranges. And if we go to last week, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to last week's um, volatility. Where was it? Here we go. This was last week's price action. Psychological zone formed in this area here and they completely removed and played away from that zone. It gave us the idea that we were looking to see lower price. So could the idea of price continuing lower this week? All right be something that we can project with Bitcoin from this point on? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. You see, if you look left, we have vector candle principles right in this zone right here. And the 15.9 zone is where the next vector candle point resides. The next point in the chart, which is going to get people to believe it can't go any lower, is at this 15K zone. But we said that when Bitcoin was at the 20 zone, came down to 19 and then bounced back up. It came past beyond the 19 and then they got triggered at 18. They moved it back up and then they come down towards the 16, 15 zone and now they've moved it back up again. Logic would say that the only point in the chart I can get commitment from traders is at this point, which is where the vector candles reside. It's the only imbalance that is left. Now, the question on your heads is thinking, do I run a short from this point or what do I wait for? Well, we have got the New York market opening very shortly, okay? We have a plethora of news announcements coming out this week. Price action might stabilize and just hold out in this zone in anticipation for what Jerome Powell is going to be talking about. Word on the street says that they're talking about slowing down the interest rates soon. What do we mean soon, bro? Like... You need to elaborate on that. And this is the, the, the worst thing about the Fed, okay? They can't give too much information out because the market will react to it. Look what's happened because of these protests. Now, these protests might die down a little bit later on into the evening and the market will stabilize, okay? Let's have a look at what stocks are actually getting affected by this. Firstly, what I always like to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I like to look at where we are with the dominance of the dollar. It's been a tricky day. Dollar dominance has been down. OK, prior to this recovery to the upside, the dollar dominance has been down. Euro USD has been moving up. Lagarde's had the conversation or is actively having the conversation. And it looks like they're not really saying anything positive. So this stop run to the upside was just a means for them to get traders committed. And now Euro is trying to move back down again to recover the imbalances. A note for you guys, if you're trading the hybrid system, and if you are new to the channel, mad love and respect for passing through. If you haven't done so already, check out the description. Go to the Traders Reality website. You can download these indicators. They are free of charge. Happy days. Now, listen, when you see Euro going up, Dixie goes down. All right. But Dixie has been going down. NASDAQ has been going down. So if we look at the futures markets and NASDAQ, look at that. Gap down at the weekend. What is going on? Now, naturally, we would assume a fill in this gap. But we've got something happening in terms of earnings announcements. We've got some stocks, Chinese stocks, that are declaring some earnings today. So where is it? PDD. All right. So this company is declaring some, it's an online e-commerce website. Okay. A Chinese stock that is listed on the NASDAQ. And they have had some great results in terms of earnings announcements, which we are expecting a nice gap up with this stock. But with regards to what's going on in China, even if the gap up does happen with this asset, 
We've got to be cautious on how New York responds to what has happened in China. Oil has taken a nosedive, trading nearly 3%. Look what's going on in oil. And when oil trades down, that means that dollar itself is increasing in value. OK, which means that USD CAD should be up and that's it. USD CAD is moving up. Notice how we had the structure right here. Rise up level one, retrace, stays within the level one zone to make an attempt to make the rise up level two zone to the upside to recover the previous vector candles sat at the 1.35 region. When oil goes down, dollar goes up, USD CAD goes up. OK, because the Canadian dollar itself as a producer of oil it sees the impact of the value of oil going down because they're not generating a better return for their money, all right? So always use that in your minds. When oil is going down, you know that USD CAD is going up, so the Canadian dollar is trading negatively, all right? Looking over to USD JPY, dollar yen, okay? Obviously, the unrest that is happening in China is forcing traders to seek the safe traditional investments. And these are safe havens, which we would understand to be the Japanese yen. Look what the yen's doing right now. The yen is trading high. Let me go to the one hour time frame to make life a little bit easier for you. Look at that. The yen is trading higher. Now, the yen can only trade higher for a certain period of time before it starts to really affect the yen. So China, so China in principle have themselves a bit of a problem, okay? Especially Japan as well. When traders start seeking the Japanese yen as a safety measure, it's either yen or dollar. Right now, they're seeking yen, which is why we're seeing yen moving up. We're seeing some profit taking coming into play. If we look closely, it's got, yeah, we've got ourselves a little bit of a gap down in the US Brinks session itself, but the US Brinks hasn't started. Well, 20 minutes, 10 minutes into the US Brinks session itself, New York hasn't fully opened just yet. And today is the first day that everyone is back from Thanksgiving. All right. So we're going to see some volatility across the board. The yields themselves are trading positive. Goldman Sachs does see that the yields can go beyond 4% going into 2024. What does that mean? That means traders are not favoring the bonds by the US government. That means the basket of assets that the government picks up, okay, whether it's stocks in NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, Dow Jones, Euros, whatever basket of assets that they do decide to pick up, People aren't favoring that as a low-risk, long-term investment. They need safety, which is why we're starting to see the dominance of the dollar trying to creep back up. Principally, Bitcoin can only go up if dollar goes down. If euro keeps maintaining this move to the upside, then Bitcoin is not going to have a hard time trying to move up. But you've also got the problem of gold as well. Gold is starting to pull back. People are now going to start taking some profits from gold to potentially come back down into the vector candle region right here around the 1739 zone. Tesla, got a gap to fill, ladies and gentlemen. Microsoft, we've got a gap to fill. <laughs> AMC, gap has already been filled. And we've got another gap that needs to be filled down at $5.25. Disney, massive gap that needs to be filled. OK, we've got some oil stocks that are going to take a beating gap that needs to be filled. Neo, the Chinese stock. OK, there's a gap that's to be filled to the upside, but we've got a mad gap down here that needs to be filled. Chinese stocks have sold off in China. So what do you think they're going to do in the Nasdaq session? There's going to be a ripple effect of this, guys. And I'm just suggesting to you all that you trade with caution and only look for quick opportunities for my long term holders themselves. We're going over to the monthly time frame and look where Bitcoin is at on the monthly time frame. You have two days, 10 hours left for us to understand whether or not Bitcoin is going to trade closer towards the close of the monthly candle or from now until the next two days, will they breach lower to only try and come back up and recover ever so slightly? Go into the, the weekly chart itself and you can see that we are etching, itching, itching towards the vector candle recovery, which sits at the 14.7. Ato zone and then the 13836. This is not me saying that Bitcoin is indefinitely going to go to this point from this current point in time. What I'm suggesting to you is that you are mindful that this is where the next point of interest resides, where traders were going to step in and try and believe that Bitcoin can't go any lower. Because that's the sad truth, ladies and gentlemen. People believe Bitcoin could never go. It can never go. It can never go. Quite frankly, it could never go above 100. It did. It could never go above 10K. It did. Why can it never go below 10K now? Why can't it go below 8K now? What, because of the miners or because of the idea of Bitcoin or because of the idea of what crypto stands for? 
like, let's be honest. DCA only works when the move is happening to the upside, okay? You're averaging down, and anyone in trading will tell you to not average a loser. So what do you do? What do you do? Do you seek safety? Where do you put your liquidity? This is where we had that conversation in the last video talking about whether you should be, uh, why the difference is between a trader and a holder. If a holder is just out for accumulation, it doesn't matter the strategy that he applies. He just wants Bitcoin. Some holders will look at this and say, yeah, man, Bitcoin at 14 or 16, happy days. I'm cool with that. But when you look at the movement and what's going on, I mean, look, we're still going through the proceedings with bankruptcy with FTX. OK, you've got CZ talking about a crypto fund. All right, cool. When is that going to start coming away from or attention of that going to start going back into crypto as such? What I'm saying is we've got China, we've got the Fed. And I do believe that any information that comes out about cryptocurrency right now is not going to be enough for cryptocurrency to go up or down. It's all going to be about what the markets say. It's all going to be about what smart money does. Because if everyone's taking their money out of NASDAQ, everyone's taking it out of New York Stock Exchange, they're taking it out of all sorts of assets. Why on earth are you leaving it in crypto? Now, I know there's going to be maybe some repercussions if you do sell your crypto to convert it back to fiat. I'm not suggesting that you do that. What I'm saying is you've got to try and diversify your portfolio to the best way that you can. But don't be blind with just making bets on cryptocurrency in this current situation. People are saying, I'm expecting Bitcoin to go up because of what it did last time. All right, cool. But we need to finalize some liquidity first before we can actually assume that's going to be the case. We don't have no halving just yet. The halving hasn't happened. So that, that would be a great reason for Bitcoin accumulation to start kicking in. So why on earth would we assume that Bitcoin's going to go up? Now, Bitcoin could shoot up coming into the 18 zone. Does that mean Bitcoin's going to go higher? Nah, man. Look what's going on in the world right now. US in denial. No recession. It's just that it's all part of the process. Yes, yeah, smack the economy up. Let's just, in, get, you know, try and get inflation down. We'll slow down the interest rates, right? Don't be so aggressive just so that we can keep people in check. Let the stock market have a happy day's movement to the upside. And then if we really need to pull out the printer, then we will. But let's just leave it. Come on, bruv, man. It doesn't make sense. The yields have, the inversion of the yield has predicted, okay? The, it's an indicator of where we are heading economically. And it is screaming recession in the US because it's at a 22-year low. But no, the Federal Reserve is all cool. And it's like, you know, we'll just, we'll just control things. Don't worry. Everything's fine. We're just going to try and keep maintain the idea that, you know, as long as we get inflation down to 2%, then it's all good. They don't ever mention this yield inversion. And the yield inversion is so important because it tells you if investors are going to commit liquidity with the government. And if they're not going to do that, what does that mean? We've got OPEC meeting happening very soon, talking about oil. Now, oil is just taking a nosedive to the downside. All right. And then we're going to have it go all the way back up again if they're going to talk about hiking out any oil demand. Like, it's, it's crazy what's going on in the world right now, ladies and gentlemen. All right? The best thing for you to do is if you're going to take advantage of anything, you take advantage of smaller term moves. And you really only want to be looking at the hour time frame. All right? Find a time of day that's suitable for you to trade whether it's the open of the London session or open of the New York session, and make your bet, get yourself out of your trades within a two-hour window, happy days. Why are you going to keep yourself committed to the charts for so long if you haven't made your money at the busiest time of the day? What are you waiting for, bro? You're waiting for price to get flat where there's no activity. Nah, man. Doesn't make sense. Okay. So, yes, when you are dealt with the idea of, oh, what can happen? Is the economy going to collapse? Look, ladies and gentlemen, collapse is like the best way for me to put it to you is if we go back in time to the subprime mortgage crisis that happened in 2007, 2008, it was an event. It built up to it. Oil started flying to the upside and commodities aren't really where it's at right now. OK, Commodities have had their run to absorb the idea of high inflation, okay? Now they're taking their profits and banking all of those gains. Gold is the only thing that is left 
to bank a profit, okay? And when you start seeing investors seeking other safety havens like yen, okay, and of course going into dollar, all you need to do is just look at your um, Aussie yen itself to understand if traders are transacting on the carry trade principle. Now, the carry trade principle, from anybody new to the channel, mad love, the carry trade principle is a process that investment funds, banks, and you name it, what they like to do is they like to take up low yielding assets, low yield return assets like the dollar and the yen itself. Okay, the Japanese yen. They borrow that dollar and yen. Okay, they then exchange that into higher yielding assets like Aussie. And then they go and buy stocks. They go and buy currencies, you know, Euro USD, everything against the dollar. Okay. And then they accumulate. When they start to get rid of those positions, they transact and give back the money that they borrowed. So they transact Aussie back to dollar and then return the payment of borrowed dollars, which in principle drops the value of the Aussie, increases the value of the dollar itself. So we can now see that traders now are not seeking assets. They're seeking safety. So they're putting it back into dollar. And this week, ladies and gentlemen, with consumer confidence, with the federal funds rate coming out on December 14th, just this week alone, sorry, consumer confidence. You've also got non-farm payrolls this week because we're going into the start of a new month. Jerome Powell speaking, all right? We are in, and Jolt's job openings as well, and CPI data, everything is all coming out before the Fed has a conversation in December. This week will dictate what the next three, four months are going to look like in the charts, okay? Now, any movement in the marketplace, ladies and gentlemen, look. Look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ still looking and trading lower as well. The imbalance that is present, I need to, it's, it, ah, uh, I mean, bruv, like, come on. It is screaming to me that they want that zone. And if the Chinese protests don't tip the market, or the market reaction from NASDAQ doesn't tip and bring it back down to here, then we would be of the belief that investors are fixated on the Fed's reduction in interest rates. In other words, they don't care about the protests in China. All they care about is what the cost of business is going to look like in the future. Okay? Let's just go over and have a look. What time is it now? We've got eight more minutes until... Firstly, chat, what's been going on? Yes, this is true. Relief rally is not the sign of a bottom. Okay, let's just check this out for a second. USDT. Let's just ask yourself, ask yourself this question. All right. Bitcoin takes this nosedive to the downside. All right. Now look at USDT itself. Go into smaller time frames just to see if we can hunt out the vector zones. Red vector candle coming in at potentially towards this 8.75 region in Bitcoin. All right. I use this as a chart to tell me if traders are committed. When you see it ranging out, it's accumulation. The first sign of a break from one region to the next, like you can see right here with these vector candles pushing price higher, suggests to me that traders want to get rid of crypto and convert back into USDT. So we would naturally assume a wave of selling to happen towards the 8.75 zone in the USDT chart. How does that look for Bitcoin? We look at Bitcoin and we only look left and we can see that there is a potential vector candle point. Now, Bitcoin has done something. It's come back into the last point that they had tested last time and moved away from. So in other words, are the guys who are optimistic about crypto going to step in at this point in time? This is what you're waiting for. If you didn't catch this move to the downside, it's done. Sorry, you missed out on it. Don't try and force a couple of shorts because that's exactly what people are doing right now. Now, don't get it twisted. Mr. Market Maker will facilitate that. Why? Because if you look down below here, guys, you can see beyond the 16K, there's $35 million, $313 million, $35 million worth of long liquidations. And this is on the 12-hour chart. If we go to the seven-day chart and have a look at the liquidation points right there, you're going to see some more interesting behavior. Look at this bad boy right here. What have we got? $5.5 billion worth of long liquidations stacked at the 15950 I will be very, very surprised if Bitcoin goes higher from this point. I'll tell you why. Because earlier on, 17 k had about a billion dollars worth of liquidations. Now those liquidations have been just at the 17. So, sorry, there it is. 
There it is. $1.3 billion worth of short liquidations. Now, look, it doesn't look like there's a lot of shorts there. OK, doesn't look like there's that much commitment, but there's a lot of commitment of long liquidations because people have been sold the idea that Bitcoin can never go lower. Please just 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 please see it from a trading perspective. Come away from the idea of the idea of what Bitcoin is. Great. It's a cool asset. It's designed to just knock out the idea of centralization. I'm down with that. But follow the money, man. People are in belief and that's what kills people. It kill Belief kills people's liquidity. It ruins their trading psyche because they believe it can't go lower. I just need to Google enough people to see what price points they're talking about. Are oh, they're talking about 100K Bitcoin off oh, from 16K. Yeah, man, I'm going to pick up Bitcoin. Like, please. Even if you don't trade, just take something from traders, okay? Whether it's Jesse Livermore, he's the guy I look up to, but my guy has been dead and gone for many years. He made 100 million, lost 100 million and made it back. The lesson we can learn from that is when you have a system and execute an edge over a period of time, you're going to end up on top. That's your goal. That is your goal as a trader is wealth accumulation. Don't stick with Bitcoin because they said it's going to be the future. Yes, it is going to be the future, ladies and gentlemen. But right now, I'm looking at Bitcoin and it's at 16K. And are we ready to see Bitcoin as the future asset? OK, this in principle would be Bitcoin's first bearish market and how it reacts to it. Well, look, it's only doing what everything else is doing. So is Bitcoin the, the, the anomaly? Is it the greatest hedge against inflation? We see Bitcoin trading sideways. Does it mean that Bitcoin's holding out? No, it just means Bitcoin is accumulating because they always end up following what the bigger players are doing with the legacy markets. OK, a challenge for you all. Go back in the charts, especially in the S&P. I've got a chart, right, that was awarded to me by a company that I was following back in the days when I was doing my stop work. OK, and they gave me. 150 years worth of price action on a chart from the day of the Nasdaq for S&P from 1929 crash all the way through to the subprime mortgage crisis of 2007, 2008. And the common theme with every drop in the markets, there was a catastrophic event, whether it was war, whether it was inflation, there were major economic events happening. OK, now, when those events were happening, the market was dropping and dropping. And then we had one big bout of movement, which then led to a reset continuation up. They're even talking about the S&P ending up at 6K once the bullish market starts again, once we've had the reset. Are assets at discounted value just yet? Have we priced in the worst of the scenarios that we're in right now? Do we know when interest rates are going to stop? What if the CPI data comes out this week and shows that inflation goes back up again? What happened to the Fed's pivot? So when you do look at the charts and say to yourself, well, what can I do with this information? The key to it is to always wait for the reaction because the markets can only go down for so long. Look, Bitcoin has gone down. Now we naturally expect a retrace continuation. Let's just go on to the five minute time frame to understand. Look what from the smaller time frames that they do it on smaller time frames and they do it on higher time frames. Look what happened last night. Sydney starts off the party. They drop it back down. You want proof it's going to continue. Wait for the retrace. If you can't recover a significant zone in the chart and no vectors are present, we would then understand that Mr. Market Maker favors lower prices. Look left and he's coming into the next point in the interest in the chart, which is the psychological low. Bang, that's a point where people are going to buy from because that's where they last moved from. So what does price do? It goes to that point to test the idea of traders' commitment. And if it's not there, they mark it down even lower to eat the liquidity of the trader stacking in sat in this 16,373 vector candle zone, fully recovered. Look left, you've got another vector region right here, which price has recovered. You've got another vector zone down here, which price has recovered. Going into each point in the chart where they find the interest, the markets will always seek value. That's all they do. They seek value of where you're going to buy and where you're going to sell. That's all they look for. It's not no magical thing, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it right. There's no magic behind this. 
We can't see where the value is. Market makers can because it's in their title, ladies and gentlemen. They make the market. They make the market to allow a trader to sell against me and I buy against him. And they also make markets for traders to sell against the market maker and buy against the market maker. They are facilitating the process. Happy days to Mr. Market Maker, whether you believe he exists or not. But all of a sudden, Alamala Research is a market maker, and now people are in the belief of market makers. We've been banging on about market makers for two years, ladies and gentlemen, and where they all called us crazy. <laughs> we ain't crazy, ladies and gentlemen, to anybody new to the channel. We understand the business model. Now, our goal is to try and work out the when, when the actual business model kicks into play. Okay? Now, what time is it? Five seconds until New York, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see the reaction of New York. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. Bitcoin starting to make some movement right now. 16,000 is the whole and half number principle. Be very cautious. Don't fall. Do not fall for any moves like this, guys. Okay? Do not fall for it. The Brinks box is on until 3 p.m. You wait till 3 p.m. That is when the market has, in principle, it has had at least an hour to react to the news. Look what's going on. They're marking price up now. Be very cautious. Let's have a look at other assets, see what they're doing. Has the market gap down? Let me just have a look at that PDD. Has it gapped up or gapped down? Look at that gap up, man. Big, strong earnings announcements right there. Big, strong open right there. Okay, let's just have a look at Tesla. Tesla gaps down. That usually dictates the story. If Tesla's gapping down, investors are selling Apple. I want to see what Apple's doing. Where's Apple? Apple, give me Apple. Apple, come on, come on, bro. All Apple, where's Apple? Ah, Apple gaps down, of course, with what's going on in the marketplace. Slight recovery of the gap itself with the intention for a continuation lower. Look what they did in the last gap down. Gap down, tried to come back up. Then they ended up trading sideways. This could be the same story for Apple today, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go down to the Dixie itself. Dixie still holding up against that zone NASDAQ. Big strong move on NASDAQ on the five minute time frame. Looking to close this gap as well, guys. Got to be very cautious with this. Don't fall for it. Yields are trading reasonably okay. I'm not too keen on that. The volatility index itself is coming down. It's sat at the zones where people should be considering shorts. The rule of thumb is you buy when it's above 30. So when it's above 30, you buy. And when it's below 20, you hold. But in principle, when they say it holds, it means you don't look to buy, but you can exploit and run shorts. That's what the principle says. So you really need to see the volatility index starting to move back up to imply the idea of assets going down across the board. Let's just go back over to Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin takes a nice little move up, only coming into the vector candle recoveries. Don't be fooled by the green vector candle as a move to the upside, guys. If they do recover and come back into a little bit of a balance, be careful. It is a stopping move. They could absorb the liquidity, trap the traders long, and rip price back down again. They've done it several times, so just be very careful with this. Look at the way the candlestick is behaving. Just pay attention to it. Ethereum, hold on. Ethereum, nice and slow flavor move right there. Euro, what's Euro doing? Euro's not really giving me that commitment, which suggests to me that Bitcoin's move is a BS move to the downside, upside, sorry. USD CAD coming back down. USD Swiss holding out. USD JPY coming back down again. Aussie Yen not really accumulating. I don't really like that. I need to see Aussie Yen making some movement to the upside. Gold, gold is rolling over. It's still continuing. Investors are taking their liquidity out of gold. Let me just have a look at the Japanese yen itself. Here we go. Yen futures. Yen futures are moving up ever so slightly. So we've got to be cautious about that one. Let's have a look at wheat. Wheat contracts. Now, why are we interested in wheat? Because if this rule or this assumption that um, Putin is releasing half a million soldiers into the Ukraine zone itself, then we're going to see some problems with wheat. Okay, so which will naturally send the wheat contracts back up. OK, so we're down at the pre-COVID levels, pan pandemic levels, sorry, when we could assume that wheat is going to come back up into these vector candle regions right here. So anybody that trades wheat, just be very cautious of the news headlines regarding the challenges between Russia and Ukraine itself. Let me just go over to Meta. Meta's trading positively. Again, you always wait until the Brinks box finalizes, ladies and gentlemen. That is and the next half an hour. You wait. OK, 
Now, news announcements coming out very shortly. 5 p.m., Mr. Bullard is speaking, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have some insight from one of the members of the FOMC in relation to what Jerome Powell could be talking about. The general consensus is we need to wait for some more data to be really, truly on our honest approach at reducing the, the interest rate hikes themselves. Just look at the trickery right here. Remember what I said to you earlier on, ladies and gentlemen. The market needs to give you a reason to buy and it needs to give you a reason to sell, okay? All my guys that are formulating these wedge patterns and these little boxes and structures and what have you, happy days. Just look what the chart is doing right now. That big move to the upside has just trapped some traders. Now look what Bitcoin's doing. It's taking an absolute move to the downside right now. Has the trap been set? Has the sentiment been done? Because the first hour of trading from 1 p.m., sorry, 2 p.m. UK time to 3 p.m. UK time, which is 9 a.m. US, 10 a.m. US, is the point when all the pre-market orders get filled. We're going to see the result of today's behavior with regards to the Chinese protest. It's going to get reflected in the charts at some point. Be mindful of the London close, okay? Look at this, man. It is quite wild about what's going on. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, I have to go and pick up my daughter. So, mad love and respect to everyone passing through to today's live to bring you into the marketplace. Trade very carefully. Only look to scalp. Don't leave commitment in the charts for too long because you don't want to get caught up in these wild goose chases of price. Mark off your levels. Be mindful with your leverage. And I will check in with you all tomorrow. Mad love and respect. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I will speak to you later. Peace.